Hi there, and welcome to another episode of my favorite TV show, I Know Jax. Now, I have to say that I'm a little bit sparked out. <laughs> this year's One Spark Festival exceeded everyone's expectations. I mean, come on, a quarter of a million people came downtown to see the festival. That's a new record, and I don't know if you know this, but more people used the Skyway during One Spark than during the whole Super Bowl week. Now, I want to thank all of you who came down to meet with me at Visit Jacksonville's offices on Laura Street. We had over 10,000 people come through the doors during the week. So I got to talk to a lot of people who watch the show. And I also met a lot of people who don't know about the show at all. Now, to me, it was just an amazing experience. And I'm thrilled to see a festival who is working to put Jacksonville, Florida on the map worldwide and transform Jacksonville into a sparkling hub of art and innovation. Tuesday next week, it's Earth Day. So I thought in the spirit of transformation, it would be the perfect time for us to talk about butterflies. Tree Hill Nature Center is a 50 acre nature preserve about five minutes away from downtown. They do educational programs for the public and the school system. The Butterfly Festival is the big fundraiser for the Nature Center. There's a lot to see from environmentally friendly and eco-friendly vendors to animals of all kinds. Just look at this guy. And then there is everyone's favorite place, the butterfly tent. But the highlight of the day is the butterfly release when Mark releases hundreds of native butterflies back into the wild. Are we ready to do this? Almost like a natural firework display. Today we're going to talk a little bit about butterfly plants and the proper plants to plant in your butterfly garden. Here at Tree Hill Nature Center in the spring, we start to plant various types of plants. And one of the biggest questions that visitors ask me every year is, how do I attract butterflies to my garden? Well, when you, want to, when you start a butterfly garden, you want to really focus on the types of plants. First, you have nectar plants and you have host plants. A host plant is a plant that a butterfly is going to lay an egg on and it's going to hatch out into a caterpillar. If you have host plants in your garden, you're going to have butterflies. It's just a matter of fact. They're going to come there because they know that's a food source for their eggs and for their caterpillars. Now some of the other plants, the nectar plants that we have that we plant as well, are things like I have here in front of me. This is a penta. You can find this at your local garden center. It is not a native, but it is a butterfly plant and it is a Florida friendly plant. It has nice big bright red flowers, it attracts hummingbirds as well as butterflies. It's a good nectar source. Some of the other plants that we have that we do plant, this is a lantana. This type of lantana is a non-invasive. There are certain types of species of lantana that when we say invasive we mean that they will escape out of your garden and go into other areas and compete for the native plants. So what we try to do is we try to one keep an eye on the plants that we plant in the garden and plant mostly natives as well as plants that are good nectar sources. We have other plants like plumbago, plants like salvias, different salvias have bright blue flowers, brown flowers, pink flowers, all different types of colors that can add a little bit of interest to your garden as well as feeding your butterflies. Now if you want to attract the biggest variety of butterflies, you want to have the biggest variety of plants. When I lived in St. Mary's, Georgia, I put together a budget version of a butterfly garden in my backyard. I went to my least favorite big box store and bought one of those plastic baby pools and poked a few holes in the bottom of it and planted a variety of butterfly plants in it. It didn't take long before the plants were waist high and that little pool was just buzzing with life. I had butterflies, bees, and even hummingbirds would hang out there. 
It was really cool. And I think the whole little backyard habitat cost me something like 50 bucks to put together. Right now I'm working on a new series of stories for I Know Jacks about green living. Our series will include stories about alternative energy, organic farming, backyard chickens, sustainable living, and other interesting topics. So if this is something that you're interested in, let me know. And if you know someone we should interview on the show, have them contact me. Just send me an email to joe at inojacks.com. You can find all my contact information on our website at inojacks.com. But now, let's find out what's happening around town. Hey, how y'all doing? It's me, Carla Michelle, host of your I Know Jax calendar. Every week we bring you fun and exciting things to do in Jacksonville. Are you listening? Are you going to the events? Let us know at I Know Jax on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. We love to hear from you. So, I think I have some events you'll like coming up, but first, have you ever heard of the world's loudest weekend? I hadn't, but Joe's going to fill us in in his top pick. Joe, what up? What? Can you hear me now? The loudest weekend of the year in Jacksonville is coming up when Rockville returns to Metropolitan Park. Bigger and better than ever. The all-star rock lineup features Avenged Sevenfold, The Cult, Rob Zombie, Korn, Five Finger Death Punch, and Stain. Get ready for music, more music, and even more music this weekend. Rockville takes place April 26th and 27th at Metropolitan Park. Thanks, Joe. Now for my picks. I'm from Jacksonville, born and raised, and I know a little bit about each side of town. My dad is from the east side, mom's from south side. I grew up on the north side, and now I live a little bit west in Riverside. And one of the things I love about my neighborhood is walking around on a sunny day and admiring all the historic homes. You can do the same in the 40th Annual Riverside Avondale Preservation Home Tour. The 40th Annual Riverside Avondale Preservation Home Tour on Saturday, April 26th and Sunday, April 27th. For details on tickets and tour locations, visit iknowjacks.com. If you're looking for an event to take the kids out to, you might like the Tree Hill Butterfly Festival. Spring is the perfect time for this event. There's a walkthrough butterfly exhibit with the highlight being the butterfly release. That's the Tree Hill Butterfly Exhibit, Saturday, April 26th at the Tree Hill Nature Center on Lone Star Road. Now, if you want to get away from Jacksonville for a minute, go just outside the border to Woodbine, Georgia for the 29th annual Woodbine Crawfish Festival. In this family-friendly event, you can check out arts and crafts, cloggers, square dancers, and live bands starting Friday, April 25th through Saturday, April 26th in downtown Woodbine, Georgia. Now for the last event on the calendar, I'm taking you to the beach. Jacksonville's 68th Annual Beaches Parade is coming up and kicking off next Sunday. Check out the 68th Annual Beaches Parade on Sunday, April 27th in downtown Jacksonville Beach at 2 p.m. Now, go out and explore. Peace, love, and blessings for your week. Now, I lived in Sweden for about eight years. Well, actually, both my kids were born there. And Easter in Sweden is slightly different. Although all the children get Easter eggs with candy, they don't really care about the Easter Bunny so much. Swedish children dress up as Easter witches. Not that very scary looking witches, usually dressed in like old grandma's dress, apron, and a scarf tied up under their chin with painted rosy cheeks and freckles. Supposedly they fly on brooms with an old fashioned coffee pot hanging on it. And the children walk around the neighborhoods Halloween style to get the candy. But the most amazing thing were the Easter twigs with their very colorful feathers. Very pretty. Tell the people here who might not know what the Florida Ballet is, what it's all about. We are a, um, at the present, a training center for ballet. Uh, we train young dancers to, um, for a professional career or if they like just for um, enjoyment and learning the art of dance, okay. primarily ballet. We have students from the age of three okay. up through adult, young adult. 
and we work hard daily. <laughs> I'm sure you do. So, so basically, is this for somebody who's looking for a career in ballet, basically? Right? Not necessarily. Not, necessarily? not no. at all. Um, there, a lot of our students, in fact, do not go on to careers. Okay. Most of them don't. Um, some of them do go to college uh, in dance right. and okay. oftentimes receive scholarships. Okay. They have learned some incredible qualities such as a uh, discipline, discipline <laughs> focus, yeah. um, attention to detail, right. completing a task, all kinds of things that make them successful. I should have taken ballet. You should have. <laughs> it makes them very successful right. in life. I know they're dying to see me in a tutu is what it is. <laughs> there you go. That'd be perfect. Excellent. Now I know you guys have a, a, an event coming up. Can you tell me about that? Absolutely. We have, uh, in conjunction with the Joffrey uh, Concert Group of New York, okay. uh, they will be coming in. It's a pretty a, prestigious group. Exactly. Yeah. And they're coming in the uh, in, end of April, April 25th, and we are performing in conjunction with them. We're doing one piece. They're doing a whole program, but okay. we're just doing it together. Okay guys, don't forget about our tequila tasting. We're having a special tequila tasting at Campeche Bay in Jack's Beach where we're going to learn all about different styles of tequila. And Campeche Bay is also serving us some great Mexican food. I think it's gonna be a great evening for us, so come and join us. And if you don't want to drink tequila, come have some food and hang out anyway. The tequila tasting takes place on Wednesday, April 23rd just go to our website, RSVP. Thanks for watching I Know Jax. Please tell your friends and neighbors all about us and make sure to go to our website and sign up for our newsletter. That is how you will find out about where we're gonna be shooting next. Have a happy Easter and I'll be back next weekend with a new episode of I Know Jax. Until then, I'll see you on the internet.